Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the gold euro chart. It's on the weekly. Unfortunately, NetDania, for some reason, doesn't have the data going back to 2003 when the bull market began. But I think you can see from picking the bottom in 2009, 2008, the beginning of the financial crisis. Actually, I should say the end of the financial crisis. You can see that uh, gold there bottomed in the euro in in uh, the summer of uh, 2008 uh, down in here, and has really, if you look at the trend channel here, you can see that it it's uh, it, it took a big hit. But if we go by the trend channel, and uh, I like to use trend channels to measure, you know the the overall direction of the market or gain uh, you can see this is a bull move and we're gonna let's just uh, calculate this move um, based on the channel itself because the uh, the you can see how dr dramatic and drastic the price moves can be from from here uh, all the way down at 550 to all the way up at 1375 but the general trend uh, the direction uh, that this line is taking that gives you a much more accurate representation. So you can see here that uh, starting on the 1st of January, we'll pick that the 1st of January uh, of 2015, we've got a price of about uh, 925. We'll just say it's 925. And then you can see that the trend channel's up at about uh, a year later. It's up about 975, maybe 1,000. So uh, it looks like it's, increasing roughly six seven eight percent per year um, depending on how you measure it so it's a slow and steady bull market if you take out all the noise now again this is in the euro and this is a currency that is in my opinion probably going to weaken very dramatically um, now we know when we're talking about third world nations whether it's zimbabwe or Venezuela or Argentina and uh, you could even say Russia but let's take a look at a few of these let's pull up the cross rates uh, we can't pull up the uh, Venezuelan currency we have to go to dollar today and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we were over 1100 to one on that but we can pull up Argentina and uh, you can see that in these basket case currencies, you can see here, there, there's an example of a basket case. Um, we, we're talking about from the beginning of the financial crisis, three to one, um, three uh, US dollars, uh, I'm sorry, um, three Argentine pesos to a US dollar, and now, now it's 15. Um, so a tremendous loss in value. Let's turn it around and do uh, the opposite, which is, uh, well, it doesn't look like it has that. Um, it doesn't have the opposite here, uh, although it does have it with euros, which is kind of strange. Let's just uh, do it with the euro, uh, the Argentine uh, euro cross. So you can see there that that is the loss in value in the, in the Argentine currency. Uh, so if we were looking at a chart of gold in the Argentine currency, uh, we would be seeing the same sort of thing that we see uh, in the Zimbabwe dollar or uh, the Venezuelan currency. And I think that we're going to be seeing that very soon in things like the euro. It comes from the periphery and it spreads towards the center and of course a lot of people have mentioned the fact that they believe that the dollar is going to be the last one to fall. I tend to agree with that especially when we've seen this type of bizarre immigration uh, stuff that's going on in Europe it's almost like there's a there's a plot to destroy the nations of Europe or at least to destroy the EU. Uh, but let's move on here. I wanted to talk about Donald Trump and what this uh, Super Tuesday thing means 
But before we do that, I have a couple things I need to talk about. Let's start with the cryptocurrencies and the number of people are following those. Now, I mentioned that I had put on my shorts again on a couple of these coins. And you have to remember, it's very dangerous to short these things. It's very dangerous to short anything, but it's very dangerous to short these. Now, uh, you can see here, I'm very uh, suspicious of the increase in the value of Ethereum. Uh, first off, we want to look at the total mar crypto market cap value, which recently touched $8.3 billion for total market cap value of all cryptos. That's just according to this site. There are other sites. None of this is hard and fast, but uh, this is the one we've been tracking. So you can see it's it's bounced off the highs and it's come back a little bit, but it's still very high. But what we've seen here is that uh, Ethereum is taking some market share from Bitcoin. And you can see here now that Ethereum has actually surpassed 10% of the market cap of Bitcoin. Now that's really, really big because you can see the Litecoin's all the way down here at 143 uh, million. So Litecoin is now only 25% of the value of Ethereum. And uh, for the longest time, it was uh, Bitcoin was the gold and Litecoin was the silver. And uh, then another one that I, I'm in the process of shorting is, is MadeSafe coin. But you have to be very careful about shorting any of these cryptos because they can go way beyond where you think. So uh, the general rule I tend to follow is that I will try to pick a peak and we'll, I'll, I'll show you here with Ethereum. I try to pick a price spike and uh, go the other way. But the thing is, is that if you do that, uh, you have to get out really fast if you're wrong. Because I shorted it back in here somewhere. I got out really fast as soon as it as soon as it went into new highs. I got out, so I got out right in here. Now I sh I, I did a test short again there and uh, ended up getting out. I, and now I've done one here. Now the big question is going to be whether this is going to be successful or not. If it's not successful, then it's not going to maintain this value. And you can see it's almost a billion dollar value. So be very, very careful if you're shorting these cryptocurrencies. I do it on a very tiny amount of money, and the only time I add to the position is if it's going in my direction. If it goes against me or does a technical breakout the other direction, I get out really fast. So you have to be very careful if you're shorting cryptocurrencies. Um, now, uh, before we get to the main story, and that's going to be about Trump, let's look at the debt to the penny. Uh, now, this is a very disturbing series here because what we're looking at something you know what I always look at is I take today's date and I go back a year ago but if you look at yesterday you can see that yesterday the national debt ticked up it ticked back down on the 1st of March but it ticked up on the 29th of February to 19125 that's 19 trillion 125 billion dollars now, a year before that, it was at 18,155. So that's a straight trillion, uh, maybe $30 billion difference. That's a straight trillion dollar deficit. Uh, and you could go to any number of sites, including the government site or the National Debt Clock or anybody else, and they'll tell you that the national debt's running four to $450 billion. Well, it isn't. You can see it. You can measure it yourself. It's it's at a trillion dollars right now, and it's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a whole lot worse, and let me show you why. So you can see here that if we go back exactly a year back to um, March of 2015, you've got this 18, uh, we'll just call it the 18150 figure. But let's look and see how long this figure held. You see this? This had to do with the budget negotiations. If you remember, at one point they had this national debt ceiling and they had to vote to have it increased. But then they did these very strange uh, indefinite suspensions and uh, all kinds of shenanigans on the national debt where they 
they stopped setting a numerical cap and started setting a date cap, which is it's a completely bizarre situation. It would take a whole entire video just to explore that. But basically, they uh, started suspending the debt cap uh, by a series of years. Now, what's interesting about this is that if you look at this figure, this 18150 figure, let's look and see how far this extends. Do you see that? Do you see how far this goes? All the way to... It's still going. Do you see that? It's still going. We are all the way to... There it is, right there. November of last year. So imagine that, that we're a trillion dollars... Oh wait, there it is. Uh, I'm sorry, October. We're a trillion dollars above this number, basically. And that number was in October. So since October 30th to now, we're up a trillion dollars. So what's going to happen as we pass through these months this year? Is it going to continue? Are we going to reach $2 trillion? Um, very well could be, especially because we're in an election year cycle. And that's when they tend to do things because that's when they don't really have anyone who can be held to account. And people being held to account, that's going to be the key to this next story. I wanted to read this entire Carl Denninger article because uh, I think that he may be on to something here. Uh, now, what I've been noticing with this Trump vote that we've had on Super Tuesday and the votes in the earlier caucuses and primaries. I'm, I haven't been noticing what Trump has been saying, but I've been noticing what has been said about him. And what is so interesting about this is that everyone appears to be against him, it, whether it's progressive Democrats or moderate Democrats, uh, whether it's rhino Republicans or far-right conservative Republicans, it seems that everyone is against Trump. And that is very telling, because if you think about it, uh, this election, what the card that Trump seems to be playing is that the establishment has taken over both parties. And the system is rigged. It's controlled by corporations and special interests. And uh, that it's a fake distinction between left and right. That the Republicans and Democrats are actually uh, part of the same group that are working together to try to bring us to whatever they're trying to bring us to. Whether you believe it's world government or fascism or communism or whatever you think it is. It, it's uh, the charge is that both of these parties are in bed together. Now, what's so interesting about this is that as the press from the left all the way to the far right and both of the parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, align themselves against Trump, it's almost like it's a confirmation that what he's saying is true. So this this seems to be the phenomenon that we're looking at. But let's read this um, Carl Denninger article because he really makes a strong statement here. Let's make this clear, Americans. Trump was smeared mercilessly, not by Democrats, which we all expect since he's a Republican, but by his own party, including, I remind you, Mitt Romney, who Trump endorsed for president last election cycle. There's nothing wrong with drawing distinctions between candidate positions, even within one's own party. In fact, that's the point of a nominating contest. But claims that someone has dropped out when they didn't, that someone else has slandered the Bible when they didn't, that you've received a voter violation on what looks like official government stationery, alleging a mythical offense, possibly criminal offense, for not showing up at the polls that someone is endorsed by 
and supports the KKK when their family has a myriad of Jewish members. And not only did they not support the KKK, David Duke never endorsed him. And more are not legitimate campaign tactics. And that's just in the campaign. Let's not forget that these same Washington pukes and their enablers sold guns to Mexican drug lords that were then used to murder innocent people and law enforcement, allowed banks to launder billions for those same drug lords without one banker going to prison for it, allowed thousands of businesses to ignore E-Verify, a federal law, and refuse to show up and deport those that it catches, refuse to prosecute perjury before Congress by members of the administration. Here's looking at you, Clapper, among other things, and more. The rule of law today is a joke if you're rich, powerful, or politically connected, and only one candidate has said he'll stop that crap, Trump. Like his views or not, in other areas, that is why the Washington pukes and their associates are scared to death of him. He might actually jail a good number of them, including those in the medical business that have bankrupted you and ignored the entire entirety of 15 USC, those who ran guns in Fast and Furious and direct violation of law, those who swindled people out of their homes with fraudulent foreclosures and myriad of Wall Street schemes and more. Yes, Trump might be puffing away in his campaign on these points, but if he's not, then the Washington pukes have every reason to be tossing and turning at night rather than sleeping. A large number of them may be going to prison. Now, I thought initially, and this is, a, this is an idea that I had, that he may be serious about this, but I dismissed it. But now that Deniger mentions this, I think it may be true. Uh, it's very hard to account for the universal fear of Donald Trump. It is to the level of terror. And there's not really a way to account for it because... His policies are not that extreme. He's a mix of uh, libertarianism with some protectionism thrown in. And uh, it's, it's kind of middle of the road, really. So there's really not a rational way to account for the incredible opposition that Donald Trump is facing. And really, the only way I can account for this Trump terror is to say that there are a lot of people in the establishment, it appears, that are afraid that this man may actually take them down. Now, I may be wrong. Uh, I said before that uh, we don't know who these people are, and uh, they're not what you think, and it very well may be true with Trump. But something strange is going on here, and uh, the powers that be... Um, are universally opposed to this man's candidacy. And that's something that sends up red flags right away. But that's something we're going to watch going forward. And uh, as of now, there seems to be a very serious Trump terror that's going through the land. And we'll talk to you next time.